Hey guys, what's going on? It's Microwave. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It, where I talk and break down tips, ideas, or problems with the games I am currently playing. This is a continuing weekly video series that happens every Friday. If you have something that you would like me to break down or discuss, then leave a comment below. In this week's episode, I'll be breaking down Valkyrie's gadget, the black eye. Not the black guy, the black eye. Now there's been a ton of guides online about what the operator does and great camera spots, but I have yet to see a breakdown specifically involving her gadget. Most guides are made to help brand new people learn the operator, and they teach you how the creator plays said operator. My goal is to educate on how the black eyes work. So that way, while you're playing, you can decide where to place them. Because not all rounds and teams are the same. I'd like to note that this breakdown is for players who understand the core concept of the game and have played Valkyrie before. So let's start with what the camera does and how it works. Her camera is a small black sphere that has two light blue rings inside. The smaller of the two is the indication marker for the attackers. This helps them find the black cameras because they can blend in very well with the shadows. The outer ring is larger and is an indication to everyone that a defender is observing the camera through their phone. These cameras will also center themselves when nobody is using them. They can view anything around them and have no turning limitations like the built-in security cameras, except for they can't face the location to which they are anchored at. Now with the core functions of her gadgets out of the way, let's get into how these cameras should be placed. There really is no set position for each map and you should never treat it like such. To gain a better understanding of where your camera should be placed, you must first look at what operators your team selects. If your team consists of Rook, Doc, Mutant Jaeger, then chances are you have a heavily defending team with little roamers. This means that most of your team will be very near to the objective. So what does this mean and how can we use this to our advantage, Microwave? Well, basically this means that your AO, area of operations, will be very small. Now going back to where you should place the cameras, let's use a server room on the new map border as an example. Here you can see where the objective is and the surrounding rooms. This would be the AO of the server room when you have the operators that I mentioned before. The goal here is to place them in the location facing the AO. Because most of your firefights will happen within the marked location, with Jaeger far away and Mew keeping in a close orbit around the objective. Your cameras need to be relatively close to the objective to allow your team to have the upper hand. The AO is kind of like a bubble, and you want to monitor this bubble and see where the attacking team might penetrate. If you place them far away from the AO, then they will have little effect and will only serve as a one-time spot, instead of having a constant feed of intel. You should never place a camera facing from inside this bubble looking out. Eventually, this bubble will decrease in size as the game progresses because the attacking team is pushing the objective. The whole point of Valkyrie is to keep the AO edge as far from the objective as possible. If three-fifths of your team is inside the objective location and you place a camera on the other side of the map, then what good does this do you? Sure, you may see the team bust into a certain room, but the built-in cameras already do a good job of showing choke points anyways. By placing one or two cams near the choke points or vulnerable areas, you can bolster your defenses exponentially. Also, a very vulnerable location is above you, because on most maps you can shoot at players from another level. A very good example would be to have a camera in the kitchen on Clubhouse, when the objective is in church or the armory. Now let's say you have the opposite type of team made up of Bandit, Smoke, Rook, and Pulse. This is a heavy roamer makeup and your AO increases significantly. Now instead of a small location you have the whole map to worry about. And this is where an experienced Valkyrie player truly shines. The goal in supporting this type of team would be to again place cameras looking at the AO, just like before. Cameras on light poles and outer walls will be a big help because it allows for maximum peaking for roamers. In this example, I'm facing a clan of diamond players who really put the screws to us, and I placed a camera on the outer wall facing the objective to allow for exact location callouts of the enemy. Hold on, Can I need someone to. I'll spot him, I'll spot him. Yeah, spot him, please. Go on, please. Go on. ready? Ready? Here I go, go, ready. go. He's. There you go. Nice. Thermite's dead, good stuff. As you can see, our roamers made quick work of Thermite as he ran to us, and the game was pretty much won at that point. This all happened because I read my team's operators and focused on what they would be doing. If you're playing a mix of operators such as Frost, Capkin, Castle, and Rook, then your AO will be slightly larger than the first team makeup that I mentioned. Now believe it or not, traps may affect your camera locations as well. If Frost puts a trap or two in Tellers, or Capkin blocks off two choke points with his laser traps, then it might be wise to not have a camera there. The traps 
perhaps will warn you that someone has or is currently in the room, either by the attacking team having to shoot them or by having these traps take someone out. So if a whole section of the map is trapped, it's safe to assume that you will not need to put a camera around that area. You may place a camera near the traps, but don't focus around them. Let the other gadgets do their job. Now when placing these cameras, it's always a good idea to place them in a location for maximum visibility. You should never make them eye level, because when someone is assaulting a room, they're always scanning for targets. If you place one where someone's chest or head may be, then chances are you're going to lose that camera. It's also best to avoid upper corners because not only is it a common location, it also restricts your view because of the 90 degree corners. I recommend above vents, shelves, or hanging objects because they make the cameras more obscure and hard to find. Believe it or not, ceilings are a good location even if it's in the middle of the room. If someone's going to take out your cam, you want them to expose as much of themselves as possible. Basically, you want the other player to either reposition to an open area where they can get shot or have them move their sights so that way they can't cover themselves. Even if it's only for a split second, there might be a chance that someone could peek them, allowing for a quick and easy kill. If you put them on the ceiling and they look all the way up, that exposes their chest and their head for an easy shot. Also, don't be afraid to keep a camera with you in case you get surrounded by the attacking team. I've been in many, many instances where I've been in a 1v4 or 5 situation and I tossed a camera above me so that way my team can give me call outs, which gave me some epic, epic moments. Valkyrie's cams are one of the best defending gadgets and should be used for intel because information is what the game is all about. You could be the best shooter in the game, but if somebody knows where you are, then they can pre-fire you before you even see them. So some takeaway points for this video would be to know your area of operation and place your cams accordingly. Read your team's operators and watch where they place their traps or gadgets. Hide your cameras in unexpected locations, either above or below where a crouching or standing head would be. Ask your roamers if they would like a camera in a certain location, either to watch their back or see into another roaming location. And so yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this week's episode. If you guys liked it, then you should give me a thumbs up. Let's go for six likes today, guys. And if for some reason you really, really liked it, you should tap that subscribe button like it's hot. Every time I get a like, it puts me higher in the search results and helps my channel grow. If you guys would like me to break down some of the other gadgets or weapons or have an idea about next week's episode, then write them in the comments below. I'd like to know some of your favorite locations for her cameras and why you put them there. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Watching That's the above you guys? They said... I injured the guy above, but I'm down. They're pushing in on you, microwave. I should get him? No, they didn't. Uh -huh. Nice job. So don't, don't, you don't have to don't kill him. That's, he's useless. Okay, it's my thing. It does nothing. One drop down. He's, he was down. Still. It's Ash. Fine. There's one coming in the alley. In the alley. He's pushing. Kill the guy alley. Nice. Well done. Well, that's... No, no, that's... Got it, bro. Holy Get shit. fucked. Get Thank you. Fucked, man. Get it. Nice. That's what happens, dude. bro. Shoddy. Face. Shoddy, dude. Woo. From the next table, we're going to look at what I call the protectors. These protectors offer the gadgets to the team and allow for counters to the attackers. Coming in on the low tier is our boy Rook. He likes to pass those plates around to allow for better protection against the attackers, but they don't bring you up when you've been downed or killed. Doc, on the other hand, would heal his way into the medium tier because his stim pistol brings back people from range with 75 HP instead of 50. 